Hey everybody, it's Andrea again, back with another video about Green Party politics. Um, and last week's video about Democrat fragility and undemocratic Democrats uh, really, really got a lot of traction. So thank you for uh, watching and sharing that video. That's great. Um, and the comments have basically the same kind of tenor, all pretty much uh, supportive. But there were a few comments out there um, that I really think that I need to address because it's a common sort of thing in that there were uh, sort of like plaintive cries from people, I guess, who are still Democratic or still haven't cut those umbilical cords from the Democratic Party. Um, and the common theme in, in those few comments was, you know, this is a divisive video and we should be about unity. And it's this issue of unity that I really want to touch on today because Green Party independence is crucial. Now, I want to start off from the bat. I have a feeling that a lot of folks who kind of lean progressive have this idea that uh, many of us in the Green Party are pretty much of the same ilk, um, that we're not serious maybe about being in the Green Party, um, and, and that maybe they're even a little fuzzy about the fact that we're actually a completely different party. We are a completely different party um, in the way that the Libertarians are a different party from the Republicans. We're not a left caucus. We're not a progressive caucus of the Democratic Party. We are literally a standalone, independent, separate party. And it's a little difficult for a lot of folks um, in the Democratic Party to realize that their tent really isn't the big tent of all leftist and progressive thought. It just isn't. Um, and a lot of folks, you know, because we're not real good about history in this country, they don't really realize that we haven't always had these two parties. There have been other parties. Um, there's been workers' parties. There's been socialist parties. In fact, Eugene Debs, back in the, the turn of the 20th century, was a presidential candidate who was in prison for one of the socialist parties. He was their candidate. You know, of course, there was the Whig Party back in the day. And then we've even seen throughout the history of the United States where the philosophy and the aims of both the Rep Republican and the Democratic Party actually switched. So, um, you know, it bears stating that the Democratic Party was a party that was started by Andrew Jackson, the quote unquote Indian killer, um, Old Hickory. Um, and, you know, so there has been maybe some philosophical shift, but basically speaking, these two parties, the Democrat and Republican Party, have been parties that uphold empire, they uphold imperialism, um, and even when the Democratic Party uh, started encouraging working class people to join their party, they still had these, these core issues of, you know, uh, a party based on colonialism, a party based on support of the capitalist system, and you saw that in the New Deal uh, with the Democratic Party and, of course, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. You know, and many like to hold up the New Deal as this great progressive shining light, but I'm one of these people that would argue that it had Franklin Roosevelt not caved into the demands of labor um, and the direct an action and all of the activism in the streets from the, the labor movement, um, of the uh, early 20th century, um, and had he not uh, passed those reforms, um, that capitalism would have been lost. And we could have been on our way to the workers' paradise that I want to see and a classless society and that sort of thing. But we're not there yet. The reality of the situation is, is that even though the Green Party does have its foundation in environmental concerns, um, it is a progressive and leftist party. And what many of us in the Green Party have come to realize is that we need to be supporting a movement of system change rather than just talking about climate change, right? What we've come to find out is that capitalism it really is the biggest problem that we have. It's the obstacle to any kind of reform. It's the obstacle to any kind of meaningful justice. I respect people who want to stay within the Democratic Party and really push from the inside. Um, there, there's nothing wrong with that, necessarily. I just really question the effectiveness of that. And we've seen things like in 72 when McGovern was doing really, really well in the Democratic uh, primary for president, um, that was when the DNC instituted the superdelegate system. You know, those of you who were former Bernie Sanders supporters, I don't need to tell you what happened. 
you know you, you know what happened you know you've seen the pictures of the thousands of uncounted primary ballots in california for example um you you know i mentioned the nevada uh, state uh, democratic convention in 2016 in my last video I, we don't need to repeat the litany the reality of this situation is is that you you can try as much as you like as an individual to try to reform things and sometimes people have this uh, idea that if they befriend a candidate or if they work for a democratic candidate that somehow that candidate is going to change their mind and be a little bit more left-leaning on their policy um, but I think there's a naivete that kind of sets in with some of these folks where they, they're not looking at the campaign finance donations um, because that voice is much louder than your individual voice and so um, it's okay for individuals within the Democratic Party to take a shot at trying to reform from the inside. I respect that. Um, it's just that the track record shows something completely different. And your individual actions don't really amount to a whole lot. And so we can have more success when we're amassed as a group of people. And I believe that, that, that the way to really, really impact politics so that we can really start having a level playing field is by supporting the Green Party and helping the Green Party to grow. Now, you have to recognize we do not take corporate dollars. This is anathema to us as Greens, right? So what that means is, is that there isn't the, you know, the, the young intern from D.C. who's padding their resume uh, that's being flown out with a few, uh, you know, computer database tools and things like that to take the, to take the work off of our hands. Being a Green means that you're ready to roll up your sleeves and actually do the work. There's, there's no lobbyist that's going to come in and, and save us. There, there's no think tank or a PAC that's going to come in and save us. We have to do our own fundraising. We have to do our own campaigning. We have to do our own outreach. We have to do the job of, of winning hearts and minds over to the Green Party, right? And there's a lot of responsibility that's uh, packaged in with that. So there's that. Um, but this issue of whether or not we are independent or not from the, from the Democratic Party um, is a little bit more difficult so we don't we can't carve out that line of demarcation when we ourselves in the Green Party aren't doing things to demonstrate that we are independent we like to uh, put a lot of attention on the Green Party platform and we should continue to do that right but it's not enough for that platform to exist if we ourselves don't even know what's in the platform we need to advocate for that and we also need to be clear about the fact that all of these agitating factors that we're trying to deal with in our platform come as a result of capitalism whether you want to abolish capitalism or not you know i should say so in socialism you're not going to lose your toothbrush you know all under socialism anything that you've earned and that you own as a result of your own work you actually get to keep so it's it's not this this crazy deal but we have to be clear about the impact of capitalism on our politics right um, so so that's incredibly important and so having a clear set of, of politics that differentiates us from the Democratic Party is absolutely necessary and what happens is a lot of times is what state and local parties want to do is that they want to talk to the person who's the disgruntled uh, Democrat that being disgruntled by itself is not enough in my opinion because if a person is just angry at the Democratic Party, but they haven't changed their worldview, they don't have a clear politic that makes them different, they're just angry at the Democratic Party, and all the Democratic Party needs to do is sing them a little siren song and they're back, right? What we're looking for is people who to join our party and candidates to represent our party that actually have a markedly different platform uh, from the Democratic Party and I'm not talking about a libertarian platform either in my opinion we should not be tap dancing with libertarians yeah I know I'm gonna get comments on that so that's okay another way for us to establish independence though as a Green Party is that we have to continue this work of solidifying our bond with popular movements the reality of the situation, if you look back on the development of Black Lives Matter over the last couple of years, um, they tried very hard not to really associate with themselves with either party. And there were many reasons for that, including, you know, they didn't want to seem like it was just a political thing. They actually wanted to get deep and represent the needs of the community, right? 
And the reason why that that was necessary for them was because there is a track record of both Democrat and Republicans completely ignoring the needs of grassroots movements, which are the voices of, of, of the community, um, speaking out loudly about what they want and what, what issues are impacting them. And if they do intersect with any of these movements, they will co-opt it, they um, will be very superficial with it, um, and be, be very dismissive with it. You know, it, you might remember, um, I think there was a fundraiser in, in South Carolina in 2016 where Black Lives Matter activists actually bum-rushed the Hillary Clinton uh, fundraiser, right? And she had a very, very terse and superficial posture to them. You know, and, and so, and yet, this is a Democratic Party that says that they're uh, for uh, for black lives, essentially, right? But when push comes to shove, they don't do that. And so, because we don't have that tarnish, first of all, we need to make sure that we're behaving in an intersectional way, that we're not being class reductionists, that we do understand the demands of popular movement, right? And that we're putting aside any of our own kind of internal residual oppressions that we may be transmitting. And we've got to really be honest about what we've got going on inside. Because those popular movements, by and large, are not hooked up with the Democrat and Republican Party, right? So we have to be very, very clear about our support for those popular movements. We need to make sure that we're showing up. We need to make sure that we're not necessarily put in the hard sell, the used car salesman sell on people that we're marching with. We need to make sure that we have dialogue constantly with them and that our state and local parties are advocating for the things that popular movements want to, to have succeed, right? And, and, and this has to be part of ongoing relationship building. You know, one of the values that we need to get rid of when we're building for the Green Party is this instant gratification attitude that the political parties have with, with popular movement, right? We need to be honest enough about what our intentions are. And we have to take the time to build the relationships so that we have relationships of trust. And then we have to be confident enough in our own track record in that popular movement to finally make the ask, come on over to the Green Party, right? But this is about relationship building and we all need to get a lot better about that one of the ways that we can differentiate ourselves from the Democratic Party is to make absolutely sure, absolutely sure that we don't do things in the way that the DNC does them. And so that means you have to allow everybody to have a voice. You have to hold vo votes. You have to be transparent. You have to do the work of producing minutes. Some of these basic things like this, right? These governance aspects. Because if you talk to someone who defected from the Democratic Party, they will give you a litany of, of examples of how they weren't able um, to feel comfortable with the Democratic operation of the Democratic Party, strangely enough. And so we have to be better. And one of the clear lines of demarcation that we can have is to have a party that is accountable, transparent, and democratic so that people can have trust um, in, in what we're doing. We need to get better on things like conflict, conflict resolution. We need to get uh, better on things like de-escalating tensions when oppression or oppressive speech or actions arise. We need to be very clear about the fact that we're not going to be just about inclusion and equality diversity in name only, but we need to make sure that our locals and, and our um, state parties are places where people from um, oppressed communities feel comfortable being themselves and speaking their own truths. Um, and that is markedly different from what goes on in the Democratic Party. Here in Denver, we had a, a congressional candidate um, who uh, went up against Diana DeGette, who's a 25-year incumbent in Congress. And um, she, she actually wrote a letter at the beginning of her candidacy that she was breaking up with the Democratic Party. Um, ran, um, had a very short campaign, five, uh, five month campaign, actually got like a third of the vote, which is actually quite, quite good for Denver, um, in that short amount of, of, of time. 
but now is going through this process of she's being very very honest about the 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 prejudice and the bias that she encountered from democrats who would tell her you know and i should point out that she is of south uh, south asian origin i believe she's indian um and so she what she was encountering uh, from white Democrats who were affluent and backing this congressional candidate that she didn't have the right to run and she wasn't qualified and she wasn't professional and you know Toni Morrison uses a phrase called race talk where people are not actually being racist but they're alluding to things that are part of the racist milieu and and so um, she is not welcome in her own party, right? We need to be clear as a Green Party that we are markedly different than that, that our state and local parties are places where people from oppressed communities can feel safe and be honest and be themselves, right? And can be honest about their truths, as I said earlier. Because, you know, we need to look at this as, as, at the, as the way that the old Wobblies used to look at struggles. Your struggle is my struggle, and injury to one is an injury to all. Because our job of Green Party is to go through and collect up all of these people who have been sold out by the Democrat and Republican parties, right? And gather them up so we can build collective political strength and have some, uh, some real change around here. And so it doesn't do if we're not dealing with internalized oppressions, if we're still using problematic language, if we're still allowing certain people with, uh, with privilege to dominate discussions and to shout down other people. So we need to, need to do a lot of policing of our own internal stuff, right? And we also need to get about the business of a comprehensive political education program. You know, first of all, a lot of people around the country don't even know that we exist as a party. And then when they join us, and this is impacting our independence as well, they just kind of figure we're sort of like the more progressive people of the Democratic Party. No, and as I keep saying at the beginning, um, you know, we are a party that recognizes capitalism as a problem. Whether you're actually a socialist or not, we recognize that capitalism is a problem. And so you need to have that conversation with people. Um, so we need a comprehensive political education program that helps Greens understand how different we are from the Democratic Party. So, you know, I keep saying we don't have to ask the Democratic Party for any permission. We should always run our candidates. Um, it's okay for us to be a separate party. So um, do the things that are necessary to create that line of demarcation in your own state and local parties. We continue to have that, um, that, that struggle in the national party. Um, but, you know, just very politely, when somebody tells you, well, that's divisive, your message is divisive, you just simply need to say to them, I understand, but as it is, we're already not unified. We are a separate party with all due respect to you. So I hope that helps. Um, I'm gonna put some resource links at the bottom in the description of, of the video. Um, and please share, and thank you so much for engaging with me on these topics. Um, shoot me an email, shoot me a comment here. Let me know if there's something that you want me to address. So thanks a lot and have a great day, bye.